Is it me? Am I the drama? I don't think I'm the drama. Maybe I am. Am I the villain? I don't think I'm the villain. The hipster aesthetic centers itself around counterculturalism, casualness, authenticity, and rebellion against the mainstream. They've had a lot of styles throughout history, but I recently became interested in their emergence in the late 2000s to mid 2010s. During this time, the hipster aesthetic had a major influence on fashion. And this aesthetic is fascinating, mainly because there is just so much more to it than suspenders and horn rimmed glasses. Also, the aesthetic was so dominant that it incorporates a lot of main 2010s trends as well. Even if you don't like it personally, or you no longer consider it to be in style, it can still be appreciated as an impactful aesthetic of the last decade, and a super interesting one to study. So let's get into it. Background. To understand the 2010 hipsters, we have to look at their history. In the 1940s, hipsters, or hepcats, referred to men, usually middle-class white men, who tried to emulate black jazz artists. They appropriated their dress, their slang, their perceived smooth vibe, and any social consciousness that they had. And then the hipster subculture began expanding after World War II. First, there was the beat generation of the 50s, which was a literary movement where writers and artists were critical of conformity, practiced bohemian lifestyles, and incorporated black jazz style into their art and identity. Later, hipsters arose from the hippie generation in the 60s, who rejected mainstream consumerism by embodying Eastern philosophies, taking psychedelic drugs, practicing eco consciousness and off-grid living. They were also critical of mainstream culture, often referring to those who participated in it as squares. 30 years after the hippies, the early to mid-2000s were overtaken by the McBling aesthetic, a sparkly, attention-grabbing style that celebrated hedonism and material excess. For more information on this era, take a look at my first video on the aesthetic. Then, at the end of 2007, the Great Recession began that lasted until July 2009 which was caused by many things, one of them being a reckless borrowing of money for the McBling trend of flaunting wealth. And this was the moment for hipsters to re-emerge, as political consciousness and anti-consumerism was now celebrated in response to the economic situation of the world. The hipster aesthetic of the late 2000s often rebelled against the attitudes of the 2000s by replacing material excess with minimalism and logomania with casual style. The 2000s and 2010s hipsters were just like their predecessors, they had a distaste for materialism and conventionality, and considered themselves the gatekeepers of what is cool and what wasn't. And what was cool was anything that could give them the appearance of uniqueness, because essential to hipsters' identity was being associated with authenticity and the right kind of culture, as in not the culture that everyone else likes. This can include the right alternative music, books, art, clothes, and having unique experiences or being at the right hipster events. Contributing to this identity was the social context of the late 2000s to mid 2010s. The loss of wealth in the recession led to the gentrification of many non-affluent suburbs across the Western world. People who could no longer afford their houses had to move to cheaper neighborhoods. These cheap neighborhoods are often attracted to students and artists due to their low cost of living, and hipsters often came from the students and artists demographic. Over time, as hipsters moved into these neighborhoods, they filled out with cafes, vintage stores, galleries, and a cultural collectiveness targeting hipsters' alternative life choices. They are a key reason as to why the hipster look became so popular around the late 2000s and early 2010s, because the culture of these areas validated the hipster lifestyle. Hipsters were, ironically, extremely important to their economies, and hipsters also deeply identified with them, claiming them as authentic and unique and occupying them by the masses. The popularity of the hipster aesthetic in these areas where all this new commercialism was being developed really helped to cement the aesthetic as a dominant trend of the late 2000s to mid 2010s. Clothes. Before we get into specific items, let's contextualize the look even further by looking at specific fashion influences. Firstly, trends tend to reappear every 20 to 30 years. This means towards the end of the 2000s and into the mid 2010s, a late 80s to early 90s resurgence was bound to happen. Hipsters took most of their influences from the subcultures of this time period, in particular 80s to 90s Seattle grunge. It suited them, as grunge was for struggling artists and those disenchanted with mainstream culture. Grunge created a lot of anti-fashion styles that subverted representations of tradition and authority, such as unisex clothes instead of distinctly gendered garments, and casual and unkept clothes instead of neat or glamorous styles. This is why the subculture is so influential to hipsters, 
because while there were definitely some hipster trends that were inspired by more general 80s styles, the grunge slacker style or slouch look was in direct contrast to the 80s excessive and glossy trends, just like the 2010 hipster anti-fashion and casualness was in direct contrast to the glossy and flashy McBling aesthetic. Importantly, grunge also incorporated a lot of thrift store, which often included the lumberjack clothing of the surrounding outdoor workers of Seattle. And this is important to note as thrift store clothing and vintage clothing was a big part of the late 2000s to 2010 hipster aesthetic. The second influence was the two sides of the consumerist spectrum. On one side, there was the anti-consumerist hipster thrift store trend, and on the other was the fast fashion hyper-consumerist trend. While the 2010 hipster aesthetic put a strong emphasis on sustainable thrift store clothing, the 2000s and 2010s also saw a huge rise in fast fashion. Companies began replicating dominant trends, like hipster trends, and mass producing their clothes at a low cost, encouraging people to consume more faster to keep up with each new item. This is the complete opposite of sustainable fashion, but unfortunately, it informed a lot of the hipster aesthetic. Popular fast fashion brands like Urban Outfitters began pumping out hipster items, as well as directly targeting hipsters by associating indie music with their brand or having hipster hobby items sold in their stores like film cameras and vinyl. This merging of hipster culture with fast fashion overshadowed its alternative expression. It also meant that this hipster aesthetic incorporated many general trends of the 2010s as well. For example, Peter Pan collars are more associated with twee aesthetics of the 2010s, and high-low skirts were an extremely popular mainstream fashion trend of the 2010s. But when paired with the right hipster items, they can both be accepted as part of the hipster aesthetic. And we'll see many examples of this as we go along. But for now, it's important to remember this is due to hipster fashion merging with fast fashion and becoming more diluted into the mainstream. The final influence on the close of this aesthetic was the rise in social media. Fashion blogs of the time were heavily influenced by the hipster style, and this helped propel its dominance. Additionally, online aesthetic sharing platforms like We Heart It, Polyvore, and Tumblr reached their peak of popularity in the 2010s. They all helped promote the hipster aesthetic, but none more so than Tumblr. During the 2010s, the Tumblr girl often embodied the hipster aesthetic, with things like wearing vintage clothing and sharing emotional posts relating to their disenchantment with the world. The Tumblr girl helped legitimize the aesthetic by making it a cultural media phenomenon towards the mid 2010s. Other social media trends that helped popularize the hipster aesthetic were things like the rise of vegan and van life influencers, who all promoted a sort of alternative living choice. Essentially, this combination of grunge influences, fast fashion, and rise in social media led to a sort of confused aesthetic that was very much of its time. Subcultures of the past have existed in more of a social vacuum, and this meant they were able to stay out of the mainstream for longer, which made them more pure in a way as they were kind of unaffected by other aesthetics. But the hipsters of the late 2000s and 2010s were living in a world of mass communication, so therefore their aesthetic was much more diluted into the mainstream than any other hipster aesthetic before in history. And we'll see many examples of this as we go along. But for now, let's get into specific items. Pants. The late 2000s were the golden age of the skinny jean, and the style was extremely popular with hipsters, being drawn to the rebellious and androgynous silhouette. The popularity came about through Eddie Slaman, the creative director of Dior Homme, from 2000 to 2007 who created many skinny jean silhouettes on the runway but subverted expectations of traditional masculinity. Additionally, skinny jeans have been seen in other hipster movements such as the beat generation of the 50s because it suited their gender neutral and minimalistic social movement. And they were also seen in some general 80s trends and subcultures such as heavy metal and punk. In fact, the 2010 revival of the skinny jean trend also helped the 2010 hipsters recreate the dominant silhouette of the 80s era which is tight at the bottom and big on top. Later, the skinny jean was so popular with hipsters that it became multicolored too. Going along with the skinny jean silhouette was the hipster legging trend, which came in neutral tones, bright colors and patterns, and pleather for a more formal style. Not to be confused with the later 2010s trend of athleisure, the hipster legging was made hipster when paired with hipster items like hats, large vintage jumpers, cardigans, jackets, and incorporated vintage prints. This legging trend was a direct recreation of 80s leggings, which were also often worn with big baggy jumpers. And when the hipster paired them with tall woolly socks, they were also very similar to 80s leg warmers. There was also the Harlem pant, which was originally a Middle Eastern pant from the ancient world, but was made popular in Western culture in the 80s and early 90s by the MC Hammer pant, 
This pant was also super popular in mainstream trends, so it was an example of hipsters' incorporation of general 2010 styles into their aesthetic. Overalls Overalls were a classic item for the 2010 hipster as an instant communication of both unisex styles and anti-fashion. Overalls have had a long and complex history since their creation, associated with many different periods and styles, but one of their strongest references is to rural farm workers. Then, in the 60s, overalls became a popular garment among American youth, being seen as playful and alternative. Hipsters' love for alternative fashion and retro trends meant that the overalls were perfect for their aesthetic. Tops. Perhaps the most essential garment of a 2010 hipster look is a plaid shirt. This was worn many ways, the most common being over a top, or buttoned up right to the top, or tied around the waist, or as a flannel jacket. The Scottish pattern was originally a symbol of military, but was also used throughout 80s punk trends who subverted this military symbolism for their anti-establishment ethic. The top is also synonymous with lumberjack style, and so it was a very popular grunge trend in their own display of anti-fashion and anti-establishment. It should also be noted that often the plaid top buttoned up was an appropriation of Hispanic subcultures. Another super popular hipster top was the V-neck, which was appreciated as being an alternative take on the traditional crew neck. They also became popular as a reinterpretation of 90s styles. Then there was the muscle tee, which was essentially a t-shirt without sleeves, and so was considered an alternative and edgy unisex item by the hipster despite it being a pretty mainstream trend of the 2010s. Its silhouette became most popular in the 80s with surfers and bodybuilders who used it as a working out top. The hipsters often wore muscle tees with vintage prints. There was also a very popular vintage print t-shirt trend, which was a way to communicate the hipsters' celebration of alternative interests and love for vintage fashion. The trend took note from grunge fashion, who often incorporated vintage music t-shirts, and ironic displays of pop culture. Oversized t-shirts were another nod to the 90s grunge revival, where girls adopted loose-fitting clothing to subvert the expectations of tight-fitting feminine clothes. In the 2010s, these oversized tops were worn over leggings and skinny jeans, or as dresses themselves, and they helped create the classic silhouette of large on top and tight at the bottom. Plus, they were also probably a rebellion against the 2000s tight and hyper-feminine clothes. Vintage patterns on all shirts and silhouettes are a core part of a hipster ensemble, especially if they've been found at a vintage store and featured 80s and 90s prints, representing the hipster's love for thrift shops and retro trends. And finally, there was the trend of Western-inspired tops. There was the Western shirt itself, which is a Victorian-style piece of clothing representing the late Victorian era of the Wild West, and were made popular by 1940s and 50s Western movies. There were also ponchos, buckskin jackets, and clothes with fringe detailing. Ponchos originated with South American and Native American cultures. They often mean many different things to these cultures, sometimes status and honor. Buckskin jackets, which were popular with frontiersmen, were derived from disc and clothing also worn by Native Americans. In fact, 2010 hipsters, although not hipsters alone, appropriated a large amount of South American and Native American culture. It gained attention when Native American headdresses at music festivals became super popular in the 2010s. But really, this trend likely began with opening ceremonies for Line in 2009, who appropriated a Native American design typically associated with blankets for rituals, trades, and rites of passage. Then, a range of both fast fashion and high fashion companies began appropriating Native American and South American clothing. And all of this trickled into hipster fashion. Sweaters. Oversized sweaters are a particularly iconic hipster garment, either in big chunky knits or retro prints. Sweaters considered ugly sweaters were perfect for the hipster, who celebrated what the mainstream considered ugly or out of style. There was also a rise in hipsters wearing ugly Christmas sweaters. They had become popular by Christmas television specials of the 80s, so as hipsters' love affair for kitsch, irony, and recycling of 80s trends grew, they incorporated the ugly festive jumper. Cardigans. Knitting was one of the alternative hobbies hipsters could partake in. This, in combination with a lot of hipster neighbourhoods of the world being in cold climates, led to a rise in knitwear being associated with hipsters. We're going to see a lot more of this later, but the oversized cardigan was a big part of this trend. Like the big ugly sweater, the cardigan was mostly seen as out of fashion or conservative, which makes it perfect for the hipsters' rebellious aesthetic. <laughs> 
Additionally, oversized cardigans were a popular unisex item of the grunge era, particularly with Kurt Cobain, so they were bound to be revitalised by the 2010 grunge-inspired hipsters. Vests Vests became a major hipster trend towards the late 2000s and continued into the mid-2010s. This was likely due to A, they were big in the 80s and 90s, B, they were historically seen as business attire rather than stylish, and so are an anti-fashion piece of clothing, and C, they have a history with folk musicians and hippies, and as folk musicians in the late 2000s rose in prominence, the hipsters loved emulating their looks. There was also a big rise of denim vests, which were once an extremely popular 80s trend. Jackets Jackets were a vital piece of any late 2000s to mid-2010 hipster ensemble. They were a prime example of unisex fashion, being styled in a similar way across all genders. One of the most quintessential hipster items was a leather jacket, a long-standing piece of modern fashion. It's associated with many different looks, including greasers in the 50s, rock stars of the 60s, and punk and female rock stars of the 70s and 80s. Vintage leather jackets were pretty popular during the 90s, and a lot of hipsters took cues from this period, often incorporating a vintage style leather jacket with skinny jeans or leggings to create the big on top and slim down the bottom silhouette. Then there were denim jackets, which were equally as popular, being another unisex item and symbol of anti-fashion. First seen in rural workers as early as the 1800s, it's been popular with countercultural youth fashion since the 60s as a subversion of the workers' garment. In the late 2000s, hipsters love recreating crop denim jackets, a popular 90s trend. There was also a rise in acid or stonewashed denim jackets, which became popular in the early to mid 2010s. The acid wash effect on denim was a major, major trend in the 80s. And hipsters loved it so much they extended the effect to pants, which were also sometimes distressed, as another 80s and 90s grunge example of anti-fashion. There was also a recreation of grunged oversized jackets and shilling or sheepskin jackets, which were worn originally by bomber pilots in World War II before becoming more rugged during grunge. Oversized blazers were popular with hipsters too, which can be credited mostly to the 80s and 90s, where the blazer was an oversized garment to create the big on top, slim down the bottom silhouette. Shirts were also often used as jackets, the most popular being the denim shirt, which was originally a rancher's worker's garment before it became an icon of the cowboy lifestyle, making it a perfect item for hipsters to subvert. And finally, military style jackets made a comeback with hipsters and were extremely popular, stemming from hippie fashions of the 60s and 70s, who subverted the military uniform to make a statement against the Vietnam War. Bustiers. Prior to the 80s, the bustier was worn almost exclusively as underwear. But during the 80s and 90s, the item was transformed into outerwear, seen as a subversion of conservative expectations of female clothing. Its popularity in the 80s and 90s set the stage for its 2010 revival, and while it's another piece of clothing that was popular across the 2010s overall, when worn with the right hipster garments, it can appear very 2010 hipster, especially when worn at a hipster festival. Skirts and dresses. Hipster skirts and dresses were mainly inspired by 80s and 90s trends. Take retro printed dresses, which were usually short in length, loose, and either a baby doll or A-line silhouette, which is tighter at the waist and wider at the hem. These dresses took direct inspiration from the 80s and 90s, often being vintage straight from the period itself. In the 90s, these dresses were often styled with a jacket for a rougher edge on the typically feminine design, and the 2010 hipster dressed in a very similar fashion. Then there was the skater dress and skirt trend, which was also a major silhouette of the early to mid-2010 trends in general, but could look very hipster when paired with the right hipster items. The skirt is usually high-waisted and made out of light fabric to resemble a figure skater skirt, but it gets its original inspiration from 50s poodle skirts. Meanwhile, the hipster skater dress was reminiscent of the baby doll dresses of the 90s. Less popular trends were high-waisted skirts with vintage prints, which came into fashion towards the mid-2010s, and button-down the front skirts in the early 2010s, which mostly came from 80s and 90s trends. Also, while McBling was all about the mini as a symbol of female liberation and rebellious fashion, 2010 hipsters loved the maxi skirt. They took inspiration from both 60s and 70s hippie skirts associated with anti-fashion peasantry styles, as well as pattern skirts of the mid-90s, which were often paired with a jacket, a popular style again for the 2010 hipster. Accessories. Hats. An easy way to distinguish a hipster from the crowd is to see if they're wearing a hipster hat. Take, for example, if they're wearing a fedora, which was probably the most popular hat trend of the late 2000s hipster. This hat was an important accessory to the 1940s zoot suit that was mainly worn by Mexican and black men, 
especially jazz artists. Given the hipsters' roots in appropriation of 40s jazz musicians and love for retro styles, the extremely, extremely popular item makes sense for the 2010s hipster. Then there was the very popular bowler hat, whose history comes from British working men. It had a resurgence of popularity in the 80s, being seen on many artists, especially Boy George, and was therefore perfect for hipsters. Snapback caps with their broad bill and wide structured profile became associated with hipsters in the mid-2010s, particularly if they were bike enthusiasts. And then there were beanies, which were unquestionably a hipster staple. Originally worn by outdoor workers in cold climates across the world, they were of course used by lumberjacks, making them a very popular item in, you guessed it, 90s grunge. They enhanced the casual and anti-fashion grunge look, so naturally the hipsters would pick it up as they revitalized 90s trends and strive to achieve the same casual aesthetic, even adding them to formal outfits to make them more casual. There was the classic cuff woolen beanie, and particularly in the later 2000s, the Rasta cap, which was appropriated from Rastafaris, who often wore the beanie to hold up dreadlocks or for religious purposes. And later, the slouch beanie became a popular look, which was different to the Rasta cap in that it had more of a narrow shape. Glasses. Horn-rimmed glasses are considered one of the most quintessential hipster garments, and rightly so because with hipsters they were very, very popular. The trend was likely influenced by retro styles, particularly the Beat Generation glasses of the 50s, who likely took inspiration from Buddy Holly's iconic look. Additionally, Geek Chic had returned in the 2000s due to TV characters like Seth Cohen, who was popular for his sarcasm, love for alternative hobbies, and discernment towards the mainstream. Therefore, horn rim glasses, being seen as a geeky item, were bound to make a comeback with hipsters. Other popular hipster glasses were the Ray-Ban Wayfarer. When James Dean, the bad boy of the 50s, wore the 50s version of the Wayfarers, he made them synonymous with nonconformity, which became even stronger after they were also adopted in the 60s by Bob Dylan. Wayfarers disappeared in the 70s, but in the 80s the brand commissioned eyeglasses in a number of TVs and movies. And then the trend completely exploded, and I mean really exploded. So when 80s trends began to be revived in the 2000s, Ray-Ban targeted hipsters through advertising promos and photo shoots with hipster musicians. By 2007, the hipster had fallen in love with the retro silhouette, and they stuck around for the rest of the aesthetic. Another design that the hipsters loved was the Ray-Ban Club Masters. These were first designed in 1947, and the style was originally invented for regular eyeglasses. Then in the mid-80s, Bruce Willis wore tinted Clubmasters on the show Moonlighting, and then the style became really popular. They were perfect for the 2010 hipster revival, not only because they were an 80s trend, but also because they were distinctively retro. And finally, round glasses also came into fashion in the mid-2010s. They were a clear nod to hippie influences from the 60s, where hippies brought vintage Victorian spectacles from flea markets to look different to the cap frames of the people in power. Scarves. Scarves were a super popular hipster look of the late 2000s and mid 2010s. They were worn in hot and cold climates, indoors or outdoors, and with formal or non-formal outfits. Hipsters are known for turning the uncool cool, and while skinny scarves were popular in the mid 2000s, large scarves had mostly gone out of fashion by the later 2000s. But the hipsters brought back big knitted woolen scarves, often pairing them with beanies and infinity scarves, which were a broader trend of the 2010s in general. Then there was the kufia scarves, which were extremely popular with hipsters, but were an appropriation of the Middle East garment historically worn around the head, face and neck to protect oneself against sand. And they were also a symbol of solidarity with the Palestine resistance during the Arab revolt. Then there was the Alexander McQueen skull and cross scarf, which was actually released in summer 2003, but became popular after McQueen died in 2010. And while the scarf wasn't exclusively hipster, hipsters definitely adopted the mainstream trend. Hosiery. To go along with their love of knitwear, socks became a dominant hipster trend. They were usually woolen, worn tall over boots, and paired with skinny jeans or tights. This is similar to the 80s leg warmer trend and 80s tall socks over skinny jeans trend, but it's also synonymous with hikers, which makes sense for the hipster lumberjack aesthetic. Knee-high socks were also worn with shorter hemlines, which were a popular retro trend from the 60s and again in the 90s, making it pretty suitable for the hipster aesthetic. Black tights were another extremely popular trend. They were often worn with shorter hemlines, which has its history in the 60s. Here, tights of all different colours and patterns became popularised by midi skirt designer Mary Kwan, who wanted to create stylish tights and pantyhose to go with her extremely popular mini hemlines, and so they became synonymous with 60s mod fashion. Additionally, Edie Sedgwick, the it girl of the 60s, highly popularised the black tights as a trend all in itself, 
Black tights were also worn in the 80s and 90s too, but the 2010 hipsters incorporated distressed and mesh tights, which were popular in the 80s punk and 90s grunge eras, who were redefining fashion expectations of neat and clean styles. Hipsters revitalized 80s and 90s tight trends by recreating these looks when their hemlines were short. Shoes. Unisex casual shoes mostly defined the later 2000s to mid 2010s hipster aesthetic, and mainly boots like motorcycle boots, Doc Martens, and combat boots. Unisex sturdy lace up boots were a big part of late 80s punk and 90s grunge, creating anti fashion statements with shoes once synonymous with military uniforms and outdoor hiking. Doc Martens were first introduced in the 60s and actually first became popular with 60s skinheads of that era, which at the time were a subculture representing the working class and socially struggling, and thus positioning the shoe as a symbol of rebellion. In the late 80s, the boot became synonymous with grunge, and the 2010 hipster adopted the Doc Martens trend as rebellious 80s and 90s trends were being revived. There were other hipster shoe trends that were not as popular as boots but still made an impact. Firstly, there were Converse's, who have never really gone out of style since they first came into fashion in the 50s, but had a strong moment in 90s grunge, and thus the 2010s hipster. There was also Vans, which have been a popular shoe with skateboarders since the 70s, and have sponsored rock and roll concerts since the 90s, so they suited the rebellious and alternative hipster aesthetic. There was also a short period where Oxford Brogues were popular. Historically a British male shoe, Brogues were also popularised in the 20s by Marlene Dietrich and Catherine Hepburn who were challenging fashion expectations of the time by incorporating masculine items. They then had a period of popularity with mod 60s female fashion, and so were a mix of retro and unisex styles for the 2010 hipster. Around the mid-2010s, gladiator sandals made a major comeback. They were once part of 60s futuristic trends, considered to go really well with a new miniskirt and appeal to 60s countercultural hippie style. When the 2010s brought it back into style, hipsters would incorporate it as an accessory for the retro aesthetic and as a key part of their festival attire. Jewelry. Hipster jewelry was a mix of both hipster items and broader 2010 trends. Perhaps the main hipster jewelry trends were long laid necklaces, reminiscent of 80s styles, entry bracelets to music festival or an exclusive hipster event, or stacked vintage leather tribal style bracelets, which were often an appropriation of Native American or global tribal pieces. Hipsters also adopted other popular jewellery trends such as horn and fang jewellery, mismatched earrings, ear climbers and ear cuffs, which were inspired by 80s trends, and chokers as we moved firmly into 90s influences. Additionally, multiple body piercings and body modifiers were big with hipsters. These styles have been around for thousands and thousands of years in cultures before they became popular in Western culture. But hipsters likely took inspiration from hippie nose piercings of the 60s, who often brought back the practice after travelling to Eastern cultures, particularly India where the trend mostly originates, and punk trends of the 80s that included multiple body piercings. As the hipster aesthetic is drawn to countercultural trends, the multiple piercing and body modifier trend makes sense. Suspenders and bow ties. Suspenders and bow ties are two items that the hipster is known for. Suspenders have been a part of male fashion since 1820, but usually as undergarments beneath business suits, and they are strongly associated with early 20th century fashion, and from the 70s onwards, geek fashion. They also had a brief amount of popularity as alternative trends in the 80s and 90s, and all of these elements makes them perfect for a hipster revival. Meanwhile, bow ties have historically been seen as an alternative fashion choice for men, and were also synonymous with geek fashion. Therefore, it's not a huge surprise that hipsters adopted the suspenders and bow tie trend, for they embody both a geek and a retro aesthetic. Bags. Hipster bags were a direct rebellion to the 2000s designer bags. Instead of the logo flaunting and flashy bags associated with the McBling aesthetic, hipsters focused on functional, unisex, and simplistic designs that were not historically seen as fashionable. Firstly, there was the super spacious and functional messenger bag. This was originally designed in the 50s for delivery workers who needed bags with lots of room. They then became well known in the 80s and 90s through Indiana Jones and as a quintessential man bag. So it's not a bag that's been historically seen as stylish, but rather sturdy and functional. And it was resurrected with hipsters in the late 2010s, particularly college students and bike riding hipsters. There was also the canvas tote bags, which are another sturdy and functional design. The tote bag was born in the 40s by outdoor brand LL Bean who created a large durable canvas ice pack. But the hipster owes their canvas tote to a bookshop in New York called The Strand, who introduced canvas totes in the 80s as an alternative to the shopping bag. In the 2010s, the hipster revitalized this anti-fashion, minimalistic, and environmentally friendly trend 
and sometimes customize them with hipster messages. And finally, there were backpacks. First designed for hikers in leather or canvas, the backpack was redesigned in nylon in the late 60s to become the backpack style we know today. Considered an item for students, they were both an anti-fashion piece and something associated with geeks, and they were also strongly associated with college students, which made them perfect for the hipster who often came from college themselves. Also, being a bag of hiking origin, they had an outdoorsy aesthetic that suited the hipster's attraction to alternative lifestyles. The most iconic hipster backpack was the Flea Raven Karkin, his unisex and timeless designs became synonymous with hipster hikers and college students. Hair and Beauty Late 2000s to mid 2010s hipsters hair and beauty trends were mostly very minimal. The casual style of the aesthetic meant that more natural looks were favoured over anything glamorous. However, hipsters did adopt some broader 2010 trends that were considered edgy and alternative. For hair, we can begin with the undercut, which typically consisted of long parted hair on either side or centred, while the back and sides are buzz cut short. It was fashionable in the early 20th century, predominantly among military men, but it became popular again in the 80s amongst new wave musicians as an alternative to glam rock mullets. Cut to 2013 and the undercut was one of the biggest styles of the year, even with hipsters. There was also ombre hair, which took over 2010 trends, and was loved by the hipsters because of its casual and outdoorsy look. Bright and multicolored hair was also popular with hipsters, inspired by 80s and 90s colored hair, and a colored version of the ombre hair also came into style. Then there were retro haircuts that were largely adopted by hipsters, such as the pixie and the bob. While both were first popularized by flappers in the 20s, they really became popular through actresses and musicians in the 50s and 60s. They've both come in and out of style ever since, especially in the mid-90s, and have always been a symbol of non-conformity, gender neutrality, and a statement of individuality. So, as hipsters recreated 90s aesthetics, the cuts were perfect for the rebellious anti-fashion aesthetic. Another popular retro hairstyle with hipsters was hair bangs. Originally popular again in the 20s, then again in mod styles of the 60s, it was in the late 2000s that they were brought back to hipster consciousness as a way to celebrate a love of retro aesthetics. Baby bangs also came into fashion towards the mid 2010s, which were again first popular in the 20s and then the 50s, but also in the punk era and skinhead trends of the 70s and 80s, and are therefore both a retro and anti-fashion aesthetic for the hipster. Hipster hair accessories included feathers in the hair, which were often an appropriation of Native American hair feathers, and flower crowns and low headbands, which were often seen at festivals and were associated with hippie trends of the 60s, but they were also often appropriating Native American headpieces. A masculine look that is synonymous with the 2010 hipster aesthetic is the man bun. Originally seen in ancient China, sumo wrestlers and samurai warriors, in 2012 it exploded in popularity and became synonymous with hipsters. It also received its fair share of mocking, seen as a way for middle class millennials to try and act countercultural, but more seriously it was also tied to prejudice around gender, being discriminated against as feminine on a sensitive hipster. Male facial hair also played a big part in constructing the hipster look. In 2016, the Times reported that the hipster beard, or the lumberjack beard, is going to be the defining facial hair of the millennials. And they were definitely onto something. Big beards became extremely popular with hipsters, suiting the lumberjack aesthetic and being a historical symbol of counterculture and rebellion against typical clean-shaven looks. The hipster beard of the 2010s became such a popular look that a 2015 survey of New York men found that 77% of respondents without a beard said they would grow one if they could. And then there were the moustaches, which became as synonymous with the hipster aesthetic as horn room glasses and suspenders. The facial hair that has historically been seen as villainous or creepy was adopted by the hipsters as a modern trend of nonconformity and a subversion of conventional fashion. It became such a trend that moustaches became a big motif of the 2010s, being printed on clothing, accessories, furniture, and so on, and even creating a photo trend. In terms of beauty, minimalistic makeup was the most popular hipster look. No makeup or the no makeup makeup look was pretty accurate for this aesthetic. But having said that, there were some dominant trends of the decade that the hipster incorporated. Trends like matte red lipstick, which was extremely popular in the 80s and early 90s, making it a natural reoccurring trend for the late 2000s to mid 2010s hipster. There was also a popular revival of flicked eyeliner, which has been around since ancient Egypt, but became popular in Western culture in the 50s and 60s, and the retro feels strongly resonated with the hipster aesthetic. Bright coloured lipstick made a comeback in the 2010s too, mostly inspired by bright beauty trends of the 80s. And while colour wasn't a popular hipster makeup choice, the 2010 hipster found a way to incorporate the trend and still be hipster appropriate. 
grunge makeup started making a comeback as we moved into the later years of the aesthetic. While in the 90s this was typically a bold makeup look incorporating dark lipsticks, strong smoky eyes and pale skin, the hipster adopted a softer version of this trend, such as the dark earthy shades of lipstick alone or the smoky eyes with smudged eyeliner alone. Also, the trend of thick sculpted eyebrows has to be mentioned. This trend was mostly popular due to Cara Delevingne, who was a top model of the decade and popularised the look, but it also makes sense considering the 80s were passionate about big brows. Finally, tattoos are one of the most common identifiers of hipsters. Despite being one of the oldest forms of body modification known to man, tattoos are often stigmatised for being associated with deviance and criminality. Accordingly, hipsters loved their rebellious and non-conforming aesthetic. Other visual cues. Popular motifs. Often being inspired by other alternative subcultures of the time, motifs from other aesthetics had their moment with hipster fashion. Clothing and accessories that were covered in animals were extremely popular for the twee aesthetic, but because they were considered quirky and alternative, were largely incorporated into hipster trends. Think owls, pugs, foxes, cats, and more. In a similar sense, galaxy print could also look very hipster when on the right hipster items despite being associated with the pastel goth aesthetic. And finally, stripes were a popular motif of the broader early to mid 2010s, which complemented the more relaxed and casual trends of the decade. However, they were also related to retro nautical trends and thus were a big motif of the 80s. And this mix of casual and vintage motifs was perfect for hipsters. Displaying hobbies. Having alternative hobbies and lifestyles is one of the defining features of the hipster identity. Some of the more popular ones include fixed gear bicycles or fixies, which were particularly appealing to urban hipsters, or having a coffee cup in your hand, as hipster coffee shops that prided themselves on being ethical and artisan became a big thing in the 2010s, and then hipsters became notorious for taking coffee very seriously. Wearing big headphones around your ears was a good way to signify your alternative hobbies, and it has to be said that the rise of DJing as a popular hipster hobby probably influenced this trend. Finally, as we moved further into the online world, any hobbies that could be seen as a direct rebellion to this were celebrated by the hipster. Things like film cameras instead of digital cameras, typewriters instead of laptops, and vinyl instead of digital downloads. So any display of these items is a strong visual cue of a hipster. Pipes and vapes. Pipes have been used in culture ceremonially for thousands of years before they made it to Western culture, where they became associated with writers, philosophers, and intellectuals. And this made them very appealing to the hipster, but they were eventually surmounted by vapes, whose popularity steadily increased over the 2010s, considered an alternative to a cigarette and super popular with hipsters. Food trucks. An easy way to spot a hipster is working in or hanging around a food truck. The recession in 2008 forced many talented chefs out of work and onto the road, which legitimised food trucks as having amazing food. This, combined with a small business ethic, appealed to the 2010s hipster. The decline. Towards the end of 2015, Vice released an article declaring the death of the hipster. To some degree, this signified a cultural shift, that the hipster aesthetic was testing people's patience. Many countries had now financially recovered from the recession, and the hype beast, someone who is proud of their ambition to be fashionable and wealthy, and embodies this by displaying logos and highly expensive pieces of clothing, was gaining popularity. Think the rise of Supreme, Yeezys, and so forth. This ambition is in direct conflict to the anti-consumerist and anti-fashion aesthetic of the hipster, but the hipster aesthetic had ultimately become tired, and the pendulum was beginning to swing back to excess and consumption. But the thing is, as it's been pointed out a few times now, the hipster aesthetic may have appeared anti-consumerist, but didn't necessarily embody that. Which brings me to a couple of flaws of the hipster aesthetic. The first one is that hipsters mock mainstream stuff, consumerism and material wealth, while participating in it and coming from largely middle-class backgrounds. This often rendered their stance of anti-mainstream hypocritical and sends the wrong message about anti-consumerism and sustainability, which are really serious messages in the fashion world. And two, while hipsters included people from all backgrounds, it was undeniably a predominantly white middle-class millennial aesthetic. This becomes even more concerning when we consider the extent to which hipsters appropriated other cultures. Cultural appropriation also works to further maintain social inequality by incorporating the tastes and interests of marginalised groups into upper classes, while these classes often profit off the inequality the marginalised groups face. 
Let's look more closely at the gentrification of the hipster neighbourhoods as an example of this. When hipsters move in, they overtake the economy of these areas and the price of living in these areas goes up. These neighbourhoods often house coloured communities of low income and immigration who have sometimes been forced to live there because of discrimination practices that limit their housing opportunities. When gentrification occurs, it's not uncommon that these communities are no longer able to afford the rent and become displaced. Hipsters and developers, however, continue to use their culture as a symbol of a diversified and socially inclusive neighbourhood. And no, of course, it's not just hipsters that are solely responsible for this, but they often do play a part in it. Therefore, the hipster aesthetic can involve serious issues surrounding class, race and privilege. And just remember that the historical root of the hipster is not a rebel consumer, but someone who appropriates black jazz artists. But before we ditch the hipster look entirely, Developing an understanding of these issues while we study an aesthetic hopefully allows us to appreciate how it can evolve. And of course, it's also not true that every hipster engages in hypocritical practices. A lot of people who adopt the hipster aesthetic are also embodying its positive attributes. What's good about the hipster aesthetic is its attempt to embody sustainability, social awareness, and to reform outdated modes of consumerism. And if you're drawn to this aesthetic, it's definitely foreseeable that it can truly represent the value system it claims. If sustainability and social consciousness are truly embodied by hipsters, then future hipster aesthetics may even be exciting. What did you think about the hipster aesthetic? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you soon. Bye.